I have in my hand a uh, piece of technology uh, that we recently launched and it's a, it looks like a very unassuming black box um, but actually includes a new generation chipset from Qualcomm uh, we actually is an investor in IP access and we've been partnering with over the years and actually a new cha a change of uh, manufacturing strategy as well as techn technology strategy for us uh, in the sense that it's uh, built through an ODM route and I know that's kind of old hat for many people but it actually allows us to address our mass market in a new way with greater flexibility so that we can include GPS or a router or Wi-Fi or any other kind of um, adjunct uh, subsystem there with very little manufacturing overhead but with a very kind of clear customer commitment uh, and then provide the software to uh, bring that you know, bring the two together um, and to, you know in terms of strategically strategic importance for us um, that kind of manufacturing route is very important because we believe in Wi-Fi convergence very strongly and actually getting a uh, the architectural elements of that but also the product elements of that right is very important uh, for us and important for the industry we think Yeah, so what we're seeing in, um, in LTE is a much faster progression from sort of customer design win to deployment. And I think that's because the technology was sort of thought of and, and uh, some of the key problems were solved right from the get-go with LTE. So our customers and their customers, the operators, have been able to adopt it much faster, plan it into the network rollout. Um, so for us, that gives us much more visibility into who our customers are going to deploy with, the timing, the volumes, all those aspects of um, really a, a clear business case and a clear opportunity within the LTE market. Where 3G was really early for small cells and specifically for the residential femto cell. And I think as an industry, we really understood sort of why it was valuable, um, what the technical challenges were, but clearly the business case was a little bit more murky and it took a lot more time to get there. And um, as it did, LTE became more prominent and has really become the driver, um, at least for, for rate assist, for our long-term investment in small cells. So what we've seen is early deployments have been single mode um, or maybe LTE plus Wi-Fi. And that really is driven by the, the markets that have moved faster towards LTE. If you look at the United States where there was really a leapfrogging maneuver by, um, uh, by Verizon and then a fa fast follower from the rest of the marketplace, uh, Korea where they're moving super, super fast, um, not just to LTE but LTE advanced, they're looking more so to deliver things like voice over LTE right from the beginning, making 3G a little bit less prominent with regards to small cell in those marketplaces. But if you look at the mass market, um, 3G is much more widely deployed, um, is going to be around for a long time, and there's a huge number of customers already on the 3G network. So we think it's absolutely um, going to be critical to have dual mode solutions um, as we move into 2014 and 2015. A little bit of a delay. Uh, we've been you know, talking about dual mode for a while and the capabilities required to deliver that. Um, but we think as, um, as LTE becomes even more broadly deployed throughout the world within Europe and um, even more so in, um, in other markets, we'll see uh, a lot of dual mode requirements, um, which positions us very well, having um, a foundation of uh, existing wins in customers in 3G and um, a large growing base in LTE as well. So our actual ECX family is actually based on our Edge Centrix technology and what the, the um, recently announced ECX products are a significant aspect of them are is that they're very much aligned with the small cell forms released to reference architecture and as part of that and the increased complexity of, of enterprise uh, the forms introduced its release to program. Now Quartus has introduced its products which are designed to be aligned with that reference architecture. We believe we're the first people to do that. Um, we believe in the, the benefits that this architecture brings and so we look forward to 2014 when the enterprise really picks up and these barriers are brought down for deployment. Well Quartus is a, is a software company. Now we, we do subsystems or software subsystems. So our two ECX software subsystems are designed to be supplied to um, solution providers or systems integrators, um, enterprise voice specialists, people like that. So they can, they, they can then create a much larger solution, maybe on behalf of an operator. One of the key things about our software is that it's kind of agnostic as to which platform it can run on. And very, very key that it can run not only within a premise, 
and therefore you, you could argue that it should be managed by whether enterprises themselves or enterprise voice integrators. But our software can also run in the cloud uh, and that's very significant because it kind of introduces a new ecosystem or a new layer of service provision dedicated to enterprises. That could run in the cloud, that could do um, IUH aggregation or voice and data mobility offload on behalf of operators. Yes, we, we certainly are, David. You know, we've got our, our product, our first product completed. It's, it can do 500 megabits per second of throughput and 500 microseconds, that's half a millisecond uh, latency in very challenging environments. Also works great in line of sight or partially obstructed line of sight. It's a snap to install, it auto aligns in any environment, it stays aligned forever. So uh, we've gotten great reception uh, with it. It's uh, out there live. Uh, some, some of you may have actually already made a selfie phone call or two or send an email on it. Uh, the show is great. Uh, the show is, uh, uh, first of all, attendance is great. Uh, it's very focused. Uh, and it's, it's just, from my point of view, it's exciting to see this, this many people who are uh, really all here talking about technology for small cells. I love it. But what we've done is taken the approach that spectrum is precious. And in a sense, we deliver a backhaul solution that uses zero spectrum, a wireless backhaul uh, uh, solution. And the reason is that we do it all in unlicensed spectrum. We're basically able to take free spectrum, which is full of interference, no doubt about that, but we're able to use a, a four domain, a four dimensional approach to interference mitigation, frequency, time, space, and cancellation and we've built that into a, a very receiver-centric antenna array product. Lots of signal processing, lots of proprietary algorithms, but the net net is we can operate in extraordinarily hostile uh, interference environments and still deliver that 500 megs and that 500 microseconds of latency. And so what that means if you're an operator is you don't have to use any of your precious access spectrum for backhaul. You can dedicate it all for access and monitoring it that way. We basically uh, modeled it on if you can install a Wi-Fi access point, you can install our product. So we're really excited about uh, turning on the orderability uh, of our 3G module for our Aeronet access points. Uh, so, so obviously that's our, our first uh, deliverable as part of the ubiquitous acquisition and obviously oh, we're anticipating uh, more small cells uh, in the future. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, fantastic news this week about the launch of Release 2 uh, at Enterprise uh, from the Small Cell Forum. It's certainly uh, the accumulation of nine months of hard work uh, and fantastic that we've got, I think, 25 documents out there uh, on the internet. Uh, the conference, fantastic uh, discussions. I, I thought Wi-Fi was uh, discussed nearly on every single panel, which I, I thought was very interesting. We're seeing obviously a, a ramp in the interest of, of Wi-Fi, but also I guess the, the convergence of small cells and Wi-Fi, which is obviously very close to, to Cisco's heart in terms of how we're driving our product strategy and our end-to-end -end systems. <laughs>